to the chase, evidence-based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide buddy, he's your peptide buddy. Today we're back at it again with more of that BPC-157 content about a peptide that's taken the world by storm. And so even though we've discussed a range of topics individually with more specific deep dives on wound healing, gastrointestinal health, musculoskeletal recovery, its controversy, different formulations, and about a dozen other things, today we're going to have some fun and do a little game of fact or fiction. And so I'll give each prompt a few seconds on the screen so you can guess the answer for yourself and then we'll review the research addressing each particular idea. Let's get started. The first is that BPC-157 has been evaluated in many clinical trials for different musculoskeletal and gastrointestinal conditions. What do you think? As many of you know by now, the answer is sadly fiction. Although there are different phases of clinical research, its foundation is that it's done on humans, which BPC-157, somewhat surprisingly, despite all we hear about, has yet to entail, and its data has been predominantly collected in a preclinical manner, which isn't to say it's for nothing. There was a phase 1 study scheduled to come out of Tijuana, Mexico in 2015, but it didn't come to fruition. The last update on its estimated completion was over 8 years ago. There supposedly exists a phase 2 trial evaluating the administration of BPC-157 in an enema format in ulcerative colitis patients with no visible results online. Does this mean that some research may have been conducted on humans? Sure, perhaps clinically, well, not to mention the thousands of people who anecdotally anecdotally inject themselves on the regular. Does this discount the anecdotes? No. But does the fact that proper clinical data is lacking indicate a need to approach free-for-all use with caution? I'd say probably yes. Of the two studies reported to be done, which was hard to find at that, neither has been with reported results or publicly reviewed in peer-reviewed journals. Let's move on to the next prompt. <laughs> If you are still watching, by the way, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. It's the best way to help a peptide, YouTuber, hobbyist, enthusiast like me dive into the research and talk about the findings. Regardless, I hope you're enjoying this so far. So next, let's talk about BPC-157 in an oral format. If used orally, it should be taken in an arginate salt form. Bingo, that answer is fact. It's the most stable form of BPC-157, and in comparison to other available options, would most strongly withstand the acidity of the stomach, as it's better suited for the gastrointestinal ecosystem. See, that one was nice and short. <laughs> Up next, BPC-157 is only approved for use in Croatia. That is false. It's not approved for use anywhere, which may be of surprise since the University of Zagreb has published the vast majority of data on the peptide. But at the current point, no governing health body has accepted the peptide for any clinical indication, in any formulation, or at any dose. And the prominence and predominance of Dr. Sigarich's research group, this is the foundation of the BPC-157 conspiracy, which we talked about. I think it's a pretty fun one. I'll link it in the description below. Next, let's do the hot topic in that injectable use is superior to oral use. Or better put, that one method of use has been proven, according to the research, to be more effective than the other, which, in my opinion, is false. We did a whole video on this topic alone, and I think it's a reasonable question, one that really hasn't been too well investigated. I think we can say both will be more effective and easier to quantify than intranasal use, but other than that, they're likely with similar efficacy. And that goes the same for the question, do you have to inject near the site of the injury? Some practitioners do believe that site-specific injections might be beneficial, though this is based more on anecdotal evidence than solid research, and sub-Q injections are absorbed systemically. I think that if clinically used at some point, perhaps for GI-specific complaints, oral administration will be preferred given the ease and quick arrival to the site of distress, but other than that, research hasn't given us an answer to this question, in spite of the anecdotal responses, which are still worth hearing out. 
Now, another that I've seen discussed is the idea that BPC-157 increases growth hormone, which, oddly enough, is an idea that stems from one of the few articles that doesn't have Dr. Sigurich's name listed as an author. And this one is a bit unclear. It's neither precisely fact nor fiction, but a maybe, something that hopefully further research will seek to explore. One piece in particular showed an ability of the peptide to enhance growth hormone receptor expression in rodent Achilles tendon fibroblasts and likewise addition of growth hormone to these samples increased cellular proliferation. So we can't say that BPC-157 definitely influences growth hormone. What we can state is that in a single study in rodents, a relationship between BPC-157 and growth hormone receptor expression has been visualized and perhaps one day will be more effectively elucidated. Regardless, it's a very interesting idea because it raises the question, would supplementing growth hormone increase the efficacy of BPC-157. Well, hopefully one day we'll get some data that evaluates this very interesting question and idea. So I figured we'd keep this one short and address the high yield points that people are most interested in. For responses to additional prompts, leave one in the comments and myself and the community can comment on if it's fact or fiction. And most importantly, if you do like the research-based peptide content, make sure to like and subscribe. It's the best way to help me out. And I appreciate your time as always. Thank you so much and have a great day. Take care. Cut to the chase, evidence based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide buddy, he's your peptide buddy. <laughs>